Pandeep, welcome. We missed you yesterday. Why didn't you come yesterday? I know it was raining yesterday, but that's just an excuse, isn't it? You were enjoying it. That's important too. But not at the expense of missing classes. <laughs> okay. Let us argue that one, Deepaji. Oh, you're going for there. Oh, okay, all right. <clears throat> Best of luck. Okay. Um, let's see if everyone is connected. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. And uh, welcome uh, those people who are watching us online. This is in daily in the grammar running from Monday to Friday, 5 to 6 o'clock. And we go through important grammar rules and we try to learn um, different grammar rules based on collocations, based on tenses, based on different aspects of grammar, but that particular grammar rules which are really beneficial for your Pearson's test or your IELTS test, whatever, whatever you're sitting in. These grammar rules, we try to make it very simple for you. So without wasting a lot of time, let's come straight away uh, to this particular my mic's still working, yeah. <clears throat> Let's come straight away to this particular sentence and I'm going to write it here. Sentence is, let me actually change the camera to so that other people can see too. Okay, <clears throat> we have a short sentence here, and uh, the sentence states something like this a helicopter flew, yeah, dash the city. <clears throat> tell me, solve it and find the answer, and tell me what is the answer, and why do you think others are wrong? Yeah, a helicopter flew above the city. So, can we say a helicopter flew in the city? You can you can say the bus. Yeah, the bus was driven in the city. Yeah, the tram operated in the city. Yeah, because we're talking about within four walls. But this particular helicopter, do you think that it runs on the road? Of course, it doesn't run on the road. It just flies. Can we say on the city? On the city means actually it is sitting on the top of a building. Of course, we can say a helicopter is on the rooftop or something like this. But when it is in a, when it, when it is motionless, when it is not being operated, then we can say that it is on a particular building. We can't use in, we can't use on. The answer has to be about yeah so which is what uh what do you call it what forgot your name huh which is what akshay said so a helicopter flew above the city uh, do you know above and below above means on the top and below means at the bottom but do you know how how beautiful does it look yeah so helicopter flew above the city but do you know that this sentence is wrong No, you don't know? Uh, let me tell you, this sentence is wrong. <laughs> what, is, what is the right answer then? Yeah? Don't be extra creative, I'm trying to tell you now. Uh, don't, don't, don't create creativity here. We don't need creativity. If you, either you know it or you don't know it. Flew and above both mean the same thing. So it should be the helicopter crawl, yeah? Not flew. Uh, tell me one thing here. Is city moving or city is at one place? City is at one place. It's not moving. So what is moving? Helicopter is moving. So whenever you have something which is consistently moving, which is not stable at one particular position, like, for example, kite. Yeah? 
like for example plane like for example a drone yeah so kite plane or drone they're all moving and the next thing that we have is the city so out of city and all those things the thing that is moving and then the thing that is consists that is at one particular position which is city you don't use about for those for those situations you use this is it clear you understand my point uh, why did i choose about why i deliberately did not give you this option because you guys could have you, you guys could have easily said about anyway because how easy does it sound oh, about oh ek cheez dusre ke upar hai about but that's wrong so why over i gave you the explanation the explanation why over why not about because over is used when two objects one object is moving exactly on the top of another object but this another object is still not moving so will will i say the kite uh, we flew kites yeah about the city about the forest or over the forest you say over the forest because kite is moving forest is not yeah so similarly drone the drones hovered you know, hovered hovered hover h o v e r hover hover means to move rotate in in a, in, in a particular position so you said do, drones hovered above or over over so when one thing is moving you use over you don't use above is it clear so never ever say the plane flew above the city you say the plane flew over the city okay and let's come to rule number 2 <clears throat> do you have you ever come across a word called introverts and extroverts then what is what is introverts and what is extroverts I'm sorry are you here for nati yeah nati is going in that particular class she will be in that uh, the next door yeah yeah the, the other door on the left hand side okay sorry about the distraction guys uh now look at this tell me um, introverts are those people who can talk much who have got a good social circle they can talk talk much yeah no nah, they're not introverts introverts are those people who actually hesitate talking to people who are like you know they restrict themselves within themselves they don't talk much those are called introverts extroverts are those people who actually can get well can get along very well with people yeah so they can talk or called extroverts yeah so if i have so you know that those people who are introverts have a face trouble uh, you know they can't actually make a lot of friends because they don't talk yeah so their uh, social circle is hampered so they can't talk much so they can't make friends so for example if um, akshay is an introvert person so he can't make friends so i will write something like this yeah the akshay has difficulty dash friends tell me what is the answer the akshay has difficulty dash i just give you the option too I, it's not the option is the answer tell me akshay has difficulty make friends yeah can i can i say akshay has difficulty make friends or to make friends akshay has difficulty or in or debi okay or in making friends oh ye to bahut acha hua tum log ne bol diya na tell me make friend to nahi hoga to make friends or in making friends tell me how many think it is in making raise your hand how many feel in you think it is to make friends difficulty ka difficulty ka ek structure hai and that's what you're going to use and remember for the rest of your lives difficulty doing something difficulty doing something so difficulty doing something or difficulty in doing something yeah so of course difficulty in doing something difficulty in doing something so in this particular case scenario kaise hoga difficulty in coming to classes difficulty in uh, watching english movies difficulty in making friends difficulty in 
taking pictures difficulty in following rules difficulty in earning money so you can't say difficulty to earn money i face a lot of difficulty to earn money right or wrong 100 percent wrong difficulty to do something is a wrong structure totally wrong kaise use hoga difficulty in doing something difficulty in earning money so isko yahan pe likhte hain difficulty yeah <clears throat> difficulty in doing something so yahan pe kya hoga akshay has difficulty bolo in making friends how easy is this uh, come to number 3 <clears throat> Oops. Okay, now how about if I write a sentence like this? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me what do you think about this sentence? Can you read it, uh, Jaydeep? Because what do you sound so less energetic? You, you sound so hopeless. Yeah. Have you had a new haircut? You should. You should. You should feel good. Re read it a little louder with with energy. Yeah. You know the content can't. Do you know a sound and all sound? Yeah, this is just for your you to for your pronunciation bit. So all sound is British, a sound is American all the time. Yeah. So remember it this way. So when you say something like this, when you say um, dance, that means this a person who says dance means that that particular person definitely belo belongs to England or the United Kingdom. Yeah. So if you say uh, dance, money, the person who is saying this definitely be belongs to America. Yeah. So American English, dance. Uh, British English, dance. American English, chance. British English, chance. Yeah. So American English, can't. British English, can't. Yeah. You see that? And we follow Indian. Yeah. There's no Indian English. <laughs> we follow British English. Yeah. So we follow, we, we use castle. So never say can't. So just say castle. Say castle. What is the spelling of castle? Tell me, Jaydee. C A S S T L E. C A S T L E. Yeah, T silent. So when you say castle, castle, we, uh, castle money, we are using British English. When you say castle, we are using American English. We say tomatoes, we are using British English. We say tomatoes, we are using American. But we follow British. We follow British English. And that's what you're going to use British English while you pronounce words. I can't, I can't, I can't. Pick a mistake in this sentence, guys. Tell me what is the mistake here. <clears throat> it should not be I'm sorry. You should be I'm thankful, yeah? I'm thankful I can't come today. Yeah? Akash Deep, what is the mistake here? Isme? Na? Can't figure it out? Meenakchi, what is the mistake here? No mistake? Too many eyes? It should be used, yeah? What if I'm using? What, what is the mistake that if I'm using too many eyes? If too many eyes? Can't I say something like this? Um, I I got the I, I got the gift. Uh, for which I had prepared beforehand when I was told to prepare for it. Can't I say something like this? Too many? That's a no, too many eyes. It, it should not be I. It should be you or me. Huh? Nah. Absent for? Nah. But you're very close. You're very close. Trust me. Do you think it should be absent in or absent for? Absent kisat eki call. If I give you the answer, you'll be like, wow, oh, yeto kuch nahi tha. Now tell me what is the answer here. The answer is absent. Absent never comes with in. Yeah. So absent is a collocation. Absent is a collocation preposition use karte ho. It can never be of, it can never be for, it can never be in. It is always. Is it clear? Too many eyes, yeah? Wow, look at the creativity. 
the answer is very easy guys absent from so i am absent from today's meeting yeah not i am absent in is it clear hum kya this is kya bolte hain how do we say he was absent in in the class is absent from today's class is it clear so absent from all the time never use absent in yeah uh, he is absent in today's picnic now is absent from is a collocation is it clear okay very easy now let's come to number 4 so say three times with me absent from absent from absent from absent from so never ever use how about this present is it present from what do you say present in that's why we use this way we say you know we say present in absent in present in absent from is it clear this is the common mistake you know the, the what is what is the issue with our desi language hamara issue yahi hai ki we convert the sentence exactly as it is in english too for example when we say uh, hindi mein kaise bolte hain for example uh, suppose suppose jadi fail we'll say for example yeah very negative not pt necessarily it could be anything else yeah so i say jadi fail Uh, if I ask you Hindi, may sorry to use a little Hindi for those people who understand it. I'll rephrase it in English. If I say Jadeep, uh, iske piche kya karan hai? Uh, English mein kaise kahenge? Uh, what is the reason behind this? You know, there is no behind. English mein you can't use behind. Ham bolte hain desi English mein. Uh, what is the reason behind this? Reason behind this is desi English. There is no behind. Reason ke liye kya collocation? Kali ke humne kya tha? Do din pehle. What is the collocation for reason? Reason for. Reason for your failure. Reason for your success. Uh, ham desi is kya bolte? Reason behind, yeah. which is wrong. And let's come to number four, guys. <clears throat> oh, I love this grammar rule. How about these guys? What do you think about this? Oops. Tell me. Tell me what is the answer here? <clears throat> the manager, bolo, manager dash working on the report last night. What is the answer here? Tell me. Finished. Has finished. How many of you think it's first one had finished? Okay, thank you. When can we use had? Tell me, Akash Deep. When do you, when जब आपने had use किया? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever we use had, had, and then what sort of verb did I use here? Had finished. Yeah. So had finished. Had begun. Had achieved. Had gain can i say had gain can i say had gain i can't say had gain i have to use third form of verb yeah so i can't say had play he had play can i say he had play or he had played has to be had played isn't it so had played now what does it actually mean when you using had what is the difference between played and had played if i have two simple sentences and i say raj played or raj had played what is the difference between these two just give me the difference between these two sentences um shweshna batao played means already done mm the half knowledge is dangerous <laughs> dangerous it is a period something like this and this yeah shouldn't be this way um batao mujhe um jadeep jadeep scored jadeep had scored what is the difference between these two sentences this is basic grammar you should know this or both are the same both can never be the same uh, when i say jadeep scored it is a past event it is a past event that happened in the past past event that happened happened in the past when i say jadeep had scored do you know what it means it means that the activity started in the past but it died in the past 
Now, what does it mean? What do I mean by these two sentences? I'll give you a simple example. Yeah. When I say, for example, I say something like this. I say that um, I had owned a car. What does it mean? Am I still owner of the car? Yeah. I'm not the owner of the car anymore because mere paas, Hindi mein kya hua? Mere paas gaadi hua karti thi. I had owned a car. Means you don't own a car any, a, anymore. Means the activity, you purchased it in the past and then it died down in the, in the past. You're not the owner anymore. Is it clear? But when you say, I owned a car, it means you might still own it. I owned a car. Now, let me give you one more example with it. Now, this will be clear. When you say, I, ha when you say, I owned a car, and when you use a particular point in the past, a particular timeline in the past, for example, I owned a car in 1995. I owned a car, um, I owned a car in January last year. I owned a car uh, last month. I owned a car on Monday the 13th, yeah? But whenever am I using, whenever, whenever I'm using a particular timeline, a particular event, a particular date, a particular day, a particular uh, 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 month from the past, I'll use simple past. I'll use simple past. Is it clear? But when there is no particular timeline given as such, you can use, you can use had. Is it clear? But that depends on the context though. But whenever you have a particular point, particular timeline in the past, you will use simple past. Last month, last year, Monday, Monday the 13th, uh, what do you call it, 1947, 2005, you'll use simple past. Uh, can I use had here? What does it say? The manager, manager, dash working on the report last night. So last night is a particular timeline in the past. So I can't use had here. I have to use simple past. And what, what, what can I use here? Finish. The answer is simple. Finish. Is it clear? Did you understand this rule, guys? Now, let me give you one more rule with had so that you'll be a little bit more clear with had. Had kab hum use karte hain. Now, this is something I have talked about before as well. Some of you already might know this rule. If you know this already, which is good. Can somebody tell me when do we use had? Uh, let me give you one example. It will be a little bit more clear. Now, for example, I am... <clears throat> Oops, sorry, guys. Yeah. So let's suppose, for example, I am um, studying, yeah? And then while I studied, suppose I'm talking about yesterday, yeah? So Saturday ki baat ho rahe, or maybe maybe Sunday. So I on Sunday, suppose weekend ki baat kare, so which is a couple of days back. So agar mein bolta hu, if I say something like this, I studied, yeah? And then I slept. Now how many activities are here in the past? Two activities, sleeping activity, oh sorry, studying activity, and then sleeping activity. Uh, which one happened first while i was studying and then i slept of course because of the study i slept so which is mostly you guys can relate to yeah so study is something you know this is something very uh, what do you call it this is very effective if you can't sleep uh, this is something i learned it from my mother when my mom uh, didn't wasn't able to sleep she asked me zishan go and get me a newspaper my dear trust I used to get her a newspaper and then she used to read it and then immediately after one or two paragraphs, she was half asleep. So, you know, so something like this. So, <clears throat> study. So, we, so, in this case, first activity, when I say, uh, I will, in this particular activity, I can't use, I studied before I slept. I'll say, I had studied because Study while activity happened in the past, but the study act while activity died down in the past because of the oncoming of sleeping activity. Is it clear? So the first activity died down in the past. So you're, you were not sleeping, you're not studying anymore. So in this case, I'll say, I had studied before I slept. Is it clear? Before I slept. So one more example, it'll be clear. So suppose, uh, very simple example. Um, yeah, it is raining. So we can relate to this example. It is raining, yeah? You, uh, you took the umbrella. And then uh, it rained later on. So how would you say? I took the umbrella or I had taken the umbrella? I had taken the umbrella before it rained. Is it clear? Because the first activity started in the past and it died down in the past. Yeah, is it clear? So how about this? Uh, I had lived in the UK before I came to 
Australia. Am I still living in UK? I am not because the activity died down in the past. Is it clear? So, this is how it is. So, this is now whenever, so rule kya is mein seekhne wala kya hai? So, whenever you have a particular point in the past, a particular timeline in the past, you use simple past. Is it clear? Okay, let's come to the next one. Number five. Now, this is not about the human human leg. So don't think that this is human leg. This is like the leg of a table or a chair or something like this yeah tell me what do you think about this particular sentence batamuje one of the leg has been broken <laughs> tell me is this sentence right or wrong huh one of the leg sorry guys think about it and tell me what do you think about this sentence One of the legs, pick a mistake and tell me very quickly, guys, what is the answer here? One of the leg has broken, has broken. Uh, what if, what if it is someone who has actually, who actually broke it, has been broken? What if it is someone who actually broke it? So this is passive, isn't it? The mistake is not there. The mistake is somewhere else. Huh? One of the legs. Okay, who says it is legs? It should be legs. One of the legs. Legs? I forgot your name. Sorry. Sumit, yeah? Sumir, okay. Sorry, Sumir. One of the legs, but can't you see that there's still a mistake? Legs has been broken or legs have been broken? <coughs> legs have been broken. Let's correct it properly, yeah? Do you know legs have been? Do you know when you use legs have been broken here in this case scenario? Do you know that you, if you were one step closer to the answer, now you are five steps far away from the answer already? Do you know that this is more wrong now? <laughs> no, I think I'm trying to confuse you here. Now, let me make it very easy for you guys. Uh, whenever you use one of the, yeah, so one of the, so one of the, ke baad, jo bhi noun of use karte ho yahan pe, yeah, so let me highlight it. One of the, yeah, <clears throat> it will be always a plural noun, yeah. So, one of the teacher or one of the teachers? One of the teachers. One of the player or one of the players? One of the players, one out of many. One of my friend or one of my friends? But I mean, one of the glasses or one of the glass? One of the glasses. So one out of many. And then th that's, that's the first rule that we need to learn here. Whenever you use one of, you always use a plural noun. But then the verb that will immediately come after this, what is that verb? Have, yeah? The verb that will immediately come after this will be a singular noun based upon noun phrase one. Is it clear? Is it clear? It will be based upon noun phrase one. What is my noun phrase one here? So I've got, let me write it here. So one of the legs. Is it clear? A one kya hai, batao? Noun, uh, noun phrase one. And legs is noun phrase? Two. So I'll focus on one. Is it clear? Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. Maybe maybe the dock is a little heavy. Yeah. Let's actually change the camera angle so that. You know, can... Okay, or let's refresh it. All right. Sorry about the distraction, guys. And so, yeah. So, the focus will be on one. So, tell me. One has or one have? One has, obviously. So, the answer is has. So, has was right. It was just a trick to deceive you. So, one of the legs has been broken. Now, tell me. Uh, one of the students is present or are present? One of the students is present. Don't focus on students. Don't think that, oh, students. 
is present. How is it? Right. It should be students are present. So, one of the students is present. But uh, one of the countries offer or offers. Bolo, Akshay, tum bada. One of the country offer or offers. Huh? One of the countries offer. Can I say one offer or one offers? One offers. Is it clear? This is very important, guys. So never ever make. So here we have two rules. Sikhe. So one of the ke baad always a plural noun. And rule number two, whenever you have two nouns, one is your noun phrase one, and then the preposition which is of, and then your noun phrase two which is legs. You will always your verb will always rely on noun phrase one, which is one. Is it clear? Okay. Now same thing. Let me write. Let me type a sentence here. Everybody pay attention and tell me what do you think about this sentence. Guys are late. Settle down. Settle down. Major Delby. Okay. So let's write this. What do you mean by this? Nune, yeah? Is this Nune? It's not Nune. It's not Nune. Yeah, trust me, guys. This is some people have got different versions of their pronunciation. One of the students said famous. Is it famous? Did you say famous? This is famous, yeah? Did you say famous? So this is none. So let me write a sentence here. Tell me. Uh, let me give you two sentences here. So there will be a little bit more. Let's write another one. Okay, can you read uh, both sentences, Jadi? Batamuje? None of them. So let's go stepwise. None of the information was. So this time I'm not using one. Yeah, I'm using none. Now tell me, none of the information was aware correct. Answer. Give me the answer here, guys. Batamuje, what is the answer here? Was. Dimag, theek hai, kya kare? Theek hai. Okay, so this is correct. So let's put correct here. So it already says correct. Okay, for example, so let, let, let's put it correct, for example. How about number two? None of the sweets is or are available. Tell me. None of the sweets? Uh, this is something, rule number six, this is something which is an exception to what we did above. Yeah. So one of the legs. Yeah. And we focus on? One, is it clear? Now, come to number six where it says none of the information was correct. Now, here in this case, what is information? Tell me, is this countable or is this uncountable noun? Information is an uncountable noun. So let's highlight it. So information is an uncountable noun. Whenever you use none ke liye kya rule hai, whenever you use an uncountable noun with none, so none of the information. Give me some uncountable nouns here. None of the equipment. None of the baggage. None of the data. None of the yeah. None of the uh, information. None of the data. None of the none of the none of the water. Yeah. So whenever you whenever it is followed by an uncountable noun, yeah, the verb that will come after that will always be a singular verb all the time. Yeah. So is aga araiga, bolo? Is aga araiga? Is, yeah, not are. Was a word. Was, has or have? Has. None of the information have or none of the none of the information has. None of the information has. Now the sentence is correct. Now when it is followed by, when none of the is followed by a countable noun, yeah. So when it is followed by countable noun. So the verb that will immediately come after that will be a plural noun. How odd is it? Will be a plural noun. Is it clear? So is aiga or aiga? Are. Uh, was aiga or aiga? Were. Is it clear? Has aiga have aiga? Have. Not has. Is it clear? Have. So none of the sweets have, um, none of the sweets have been offered, have been provided or has been provided. None of the sweets. Uh, suppose two students. I've got two students in the class. Maninder, who has come from the 
कैसे हो बड़े टाइम के बाद हाउ वाज एवरीथिंग हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू पीपल डिडंट कम यस्टरडे कैन यू रेज योर हैंड्स प्लीज एवरीवन दोस पीपल हु डिडंट कम यस्टरडे व्हाट मेड यू टू नॉट कम यस्टरडे आ सो यू ब्लेमिंग इट ऑन फ्रॉम या आ ओके ऑल राइट यू जस्ट लाइक मी आई आल्सो मेक एक्सक्यूजेस लाइक दिस आई मेक एक्सक्यूजेस विद इट you know when i want to do something i want to get up and do something but then i make excuse myself um okay abhi 5 minute to hai you know then i main khud ko khud hi samjhata hu and then abhi bhi kuch nahi hua agle 15 minute mein to uthi jaunga you know so i i make excuses myself don't you drive you know how uh, a tram uh, can't you use the bus if if pt class was important you could have made it made it to the class anyway If you, haven't you heard of this? If I, if you can't run, you walk. If you can't walk, you crawl. <laughs> But you come to the class. Yeah? That's very important. Very important, guys. So, यहाँ पे हमने rule क्या सीखा? So, whenever you have a countable, let's write it here. So, let's write it here. Whenever you have a an uncountable noun, uncountable with all those uncountables, what would you use? बोलो. You will use a singular verb. Yeah. So whenever you have countables after none, what would you use? Bolo. You will use a plural noun. Countables. You will use plural verbs. Is it clear? Okay. So let's come. That brings me to the last grammar rule here. Well, not last because we still have time. We can do a lot of them. Next one. So let's write it here. <clears throat> Uh, this particular rule i'm going to write it here and you guys will come up with the answer and tell me what would you put it put here so for example let me make it a little bit more easier for you to understand <clears throat> how many of you are um, how many of you know who ranveer singh is most of you know who is ranveer singh yeah nobody knows who is ranveer singh yeah okay and how many of you know who uh, salman khan is most of you know already yeah? some people don't know you know people mostly people from south they don't know uh, most of the bollywood actors do you know that well, mo- yeah trust me there are a lot of people from south they don't know who who is akshay kumar they, but they know who narendra modi is because they've seen both of them together in an interview yeah anyway let's not talk about that interview let's come to the point here yeah? okay um Do you know that uh, Modi ji, our Prime Minister, is very photogenic? I I saw it yesterday. Uh, I was watching this um, uh, short video clip, and I was watching uh, where he was ordering his guards to go out of the frame. He was asking them when when the paparazzi, you know paparazzi, paparazzi, or who is paparazzi? You don't know paparazzi? It's not pizza or it's. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of camera people that actually take photographs of celebrities. Yeah, so those media people and those paparazzi, they were taking pictures of Narendra Modi, and then Narendra Modi had those guards right next to him, and he was ordering them in a very commanding way, go away. And then he was looking at the camera, bitara guard. <laughs> Trust me, he 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 doesn't he doesn't let someone to come in the frame. When Narendra Modi is the frame, well. Do you know that dialogue? Yeah, line वहीं से शुरू होती है, जहाँ से मैं खड़ा था. So something like this, yeah. <clears throat> so for example, Ranveer Singh and Salman Khan. If I write a sentence here on these two people, tell me what do you think about this? Yeah. S capital, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> It was Salman. Yeah. What have I written here, guys? I've written Salman Khan can act and Ranveer can act too. Are they similar activities or different activities? Of course, they are. Uh, sorry, similar activities. They're not different activities at all. Oh wow! Look who is here. So Kome, uh, Kome, <laughs> Somesh and Komal. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, guys. Okay. So Somesh can study and Komal can study. Two. So Mesh can crack PT. Komal can crack PT. Two.
okay or can act as well do you know this sentence can be written it this way salman khan can act yeah <clears throat> comma and and i'll finish my sentence with ranveer Uh, whenever I have two similar activities, do you know how can I write those two similar activities? By using the following. Yeah? So can or so will. Is it clear? But both of them have to have will. So if I say Salman can act and so can Ranveer. Is it clear? So can I say So same activities, I'll use so can or so will. Don't copy, don't copy, don't copy. Look at me, everyone. I'm not finished with this rule. Don't copy. So can Ranveer. Do you know the same sentence can be written with this way? Full stop. You, can, you know you can start the next clause with so. Yeah. So Salman Khan can act full stop. So can Ranveer. Is it clear? Or Salman Khan can act comma and so can Ranveer. Is it clear? Now how about if it is in the past? Yeah. If I change this and make it past. Salman Khan did act second part me kya can i use can and will here i can't use can and will i'll use so did ranveer both of the activities are in the past for example um, um, uh, akshay ne score kiya akshay ka akshay ne score kiya and ne bhi score kiya kaise bolenge aaj din class mein nahi aaye yes so, well done so how do we Thank you. Or uh, <laughs> ugly, <laughs> class <phera> hai. <laughs> okay, how do Akshay did score, so did Jaydi. Or Akshay did score na bolke. Akshay, kaise hoga? Akshay, or Salman Khan scored dal gaye yahan pe. Anyways, Salman Khan scored, so did Ranveer. Easy. If it is in the past, is it clear? How about this? Salman Khan has scored. Oh, Salman Khan, why use it? It, it? it sounds odd. <laughs> so let's make it Khan. Khan has scored. So did. Can I use so did here? Badao. Kya hoga? Easy. Salman Khan has scored. So? So has Ranveer. How easy is it? Salman Khan has scored. So has Ranveer. What happened? Salman Khan has, sorry, Khan has scored. Ranveer has also scored. Is it clear? So, so can. So will. Now, how about this? Khan, place, present or past? Tell me. Present. Can I use karunga? So can. Can I use future possibility? Can I use so did past? What can I use here? And so does. Exactly. Khan plays and so does. I has not used it. Sorry. And so does Ranveer. So whenever you have two similar activities, you can use both the activities by using so can, so will, so has, yeah, or so did, which is in the past, yeah, or so does. Uh, what if I change this with this, yeah? Tell me. Oh, sorry. Tell me. Children, play. What do you think about this? Say is right or wrong? Children play and so does adults. Now, nah. so, so do adults. How easy is this? Yeah. So whenever you have two activities, you can write both activities by using any of those auxiliaries by just adding so at the beginning. Can you copy all of them? So can, so will, so has, so did, so does, so do. Everyone, copy all of them. Okay, let's come to the next grammar rule, guys, which is going to be the last grammar rule for today. If you love this, you, love the, you will love the next one too. So let me write it here. Now, you know, I hate both of them, although Ranveer is good, but Salman Khan, I don't hate him, but he's like, 
there's no content in his movies he, just like sharuk no content in his movies nowadays you know those uh, emerging budding actors are doing well compared to those you know, those, those proper trader jimne theater se training liya hua those those actor which have done dramatics or they have joined in the drama society before him they do they perform well compared to those who uh, d- didn't belong to the uh, field of drama anyway just say for example we had nana, nana patika we had um, nawazuddin siddiqui we have got uh, om puri you know those actors amrish puri those actors which you know they actually but these people so for example if i am uh, ranveer to fir bhi better hai so for example let's remove ranveer here so let's let, um, let's 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 put someone like um, uh, akshay is still okay he can do um, okay how about this uh, jackie shroff ka beta ka naam kya hai oh yeah for example tiger, tiger woods who is that tiger Ta- Yeah, Jackie. Yeah. yeah. So, Tiger. Let's make Tiger. So, Salman Khan and Tiger Shroff. I don't know how to spell Shroff. Forget it. So, uh, Salman Khan can act and Tiger. Now, for example, in both the cases, I want to say Salman Khan can't act, and Tiger Shroff. Both of them. I'm both. 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 and tiger can't act as well can i say so can can i say so can here can i say salman khan can't act and so can't bata mujhe how would you put this so the sentence would be written this way yeah salman khan can't act yeah Salman Khan can't act, comma and, but now neither, neither, neither can or neither can't, neither can because you can never use two negatives together. Neither can Tiger, neither can Tiger Shroff. Yeah, so something like this. How easy is this? Now let me make it very simple for you. So, just say me for example, I'll say uh, UK doesn't give you PR. Yeah. so let's write this something like this england <clears throat> england doesn't yeah doesn't offer pr yeah bata yahan pe kya hoga and neither no no ye ye na bolo this is like this is like terrible do we hope ummeed pe duniya kaam hai so neither so england doesn't offer pr and neither does america yeah another does america so rather than writing two things while saying that england doesn't offer pr america doesn't offer pr too na bol ke neither does america so kaise hoga so let's write it here neither can yeah neither will yeah bolo neither has Yeah, let's copy all of these, and then neither did, neither does, neither do. But am I talking about the similar activities? I'm talking about the negation here. Yeah, so inability. Upper kya tha? Capability. Rule eight is inability, incapability. Yeah. So let's remove this. Yeah. <clears throat> Similarly, last one. Now. If you have understood this, now I've got a simple quiz for you guys to tell me what do you think about uh, this? <clears throat> what do you think about this? Um, what do you think about this particular rule? Tell me. Now let me write this statement here. England doesn't offer PR, comma. So this is talking about incapability, and neither does America. Now can I write this sentence like this? or let me write this here will it be something like this or do you think it should be something like this tell me what do you think which one number 1 number 2 number 3 Which one of these three sentences is right? Tell me.
England doesn't offer PR and neither does America. Number one, with comma and and. England doesn't offer PR full stop, neither does America. And England doesn't offer PR high, uh, sorry, colon, neither does America. All of them are 100% right. Write it here. All of them are correct. So you can write the sentence using any of the three ways. Is it clear? Any of them. So all of, the, all, all of them are correct. All correct. Let's write it here. All correct. I can use the same rule with can as well. So I can say England can offer PR. England does offer PR and so does America. And so does America using common, uh, using comma or full stop. So does America or hyphen. So does America. Is it clear? Oh, sorry, uh, colon. So does America. Is it clear, guys? Look at that. Okay. So this is how it is, guys. So never ever get them. So whenever you have them, mostly you will see this, these sort of advanced structures in your writing, uh, sorry, in your reading blanks. So never ever make a mistake with these in future. Will you ever make a mistake, guys? Tell me. Yeah? Raise your hands. Never make a mistake. But you know, I'm still 100% sure you'll make mistakes. <laughs> I know you'll make mistakes. You're prone to... You're prone to make mistakes or you're prone to making mistakes? You're prone to make mistakes or prone? You know what is prone to? What is prone to? Who can tell me? But I'm there. What is prone to? What is prone to? For example, um, so for example, mistakes are not So suppose, for example, um, yeah, Melbourne, yeah, changing weather. So will I say uh, Melbourne is uh, Melbourne is prone to? changing weather is noun so let's make it a, a different example for example i am prone to i am prone to be or being i'm prone to be be told or being told being told prone to ke baad collocation hai prone to prone to means you're bound you're exposed to so you're exposed to making mistakes you're prone to you do it over and over again prone to so prone to ke saath collocation kya hai you always use prone to doing something of course you can put noun too for example uh, he's prone to errors Error is noun, yeah? But he is prone to making errors, yeah? Uh, for example, there is a deer. You may bar bar example they um, uh, Deer is prone to get caught or getting, or the thief is prone to get caught or getting caught. The, the thief is prone to getting caught, not get caught. Is it clear? So there are certain words, this ke, two ke baad, you use verb plus ing. Let me actually give you all of them. Can you write them one by one? Those phrases, jin ke pas, jin ke baad, after those phrases, after two, you will put, normally, hum, hum kaise bolte? I would like to playing or I would like to play? Yeah? I would like to take my wife to dinner or I'd like to taking my wife out to, for dinner? I would love to take. Yeah? So, two ke baad, you use. You know, my wife is listening to this, to, uh, is watching this live class too today. So that's why I'm a little bit nervous today. Yeah? So, yeah, um, yeah, she just messaged me. Yeah, you know, she's. You know that this grammar session is like open for everyone. So I think I should do something about it. You know? Good examples only. Yeah. So let, let's come to the point. Yeah. Let's come. Let's come to the point. So. So um. Yes. Yeah, so, so guys, so let's come to the point. So, so two ke baad, verb plus ing. Let's write those phrases, yeah? Dedicated to. Dedicated, dedicated to. Ke baad, verb plus ing. He's dedicated to working regularly. He's dedicated to earning money. Um, committed to. Committed to. Yeah, he's committed to. Yeah, he's committed to driving taxi. Yeah, he drives taxi all day, all night. Do you know hungry shift driving me? Taxi means are both at a hungry, hungry shift. When you constantly, you're, when you're constantly on road, you know, you don't come home because you, your meter is chalu. Yeah, it's on, so that's called hungry shift. Yeah, taxi people they know this. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, terminology. Um, he's committed to drive. So dedicated to, committed to. In addition to, write it down, everyone. In addition, in addition to. In addition to talk or talk, oh, you tomorrow structure be in addition to talk or talking. In addition to talking, yeah. Look forward to write it down, everyone. 
look forward to <clears throat> yeah yeah look forward to huh so when it comes to write it down when it comes to when it comes to with regard to with regard to with regard to with regard to yeah and last one contribute to contribute to can you repeat those phrases back to me and tell me what did you write starting from number one dedicated to committed to in addition to look forward to when it comes to with regard to contribute to yeah. prone to yeah prone to so how easy is this so whenever you have a verb after these phrases you will always put the verb in ing form is it clear thank you all right guys we we finish with this session other branches can you start with the pt session thank you so much for those people who were with us online including some other people who were there today and Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And I'll uh, be with you tomorrow, inshallah. Take care, guys. Let's start with the PT session.